The human eye is a marvel of engineering. Able to detect light down to a single photon, it is a powerful tool that makes possible so many other wonders of human technology and art. Whether or not the eyes are the windows of the soul, as the ancients believed, they are certainly our windows to the world. Today, the human eye is a centerpiece in the debate over evolution. Both sides claim it as evidence for their argument. Charles Darwin expressed doubt, at first, that evolution could produce the eye. To suppose that the eye, with all its inimitable contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances, for admitting different amounts of light, and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aberration could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest possible degree. But Darwin didn't stop there. While it seems impossible for natural selection to have produced the eye, Darwin thought he had found a way around the problem. He said that if we could find a, a series from the simplest to the most complex, of these various kinds of eyes, then the objection to his theory should go away. Well, when we look at modern animals, we do find, in fact, a range of eyes, ranging from the simplest, that is a simple light-sensitive spot, to the most complex, namely the human eye. That's what we have in, in animals that are alive today. Darwin, and evolutionists after him, relied on these small gradations in modern animals to overcome the vast improbability of building an eye through an unguided process. Prominent atheist Richard Dawkins said that natural selection designed complex features by breaking the improbability up into small manageable parts, smearing out the luck needed, going round the back of Mount Improbable and crawling up the gentle slopes. For Dawkins, the gentle slopes take the form of different types of eyes in nature, all displaying various amounts of complexity. However, there are countless missing stages in the evolutionary story of the vertebrate eye. Darwin, and now Dawkins, assume rather than demonstrate these innumerable missing stages. Something more is needed to truly demonstrate the evolution of the eye. To do that, we would have to go back in the fossil record and see how eyes started out simple and then evolved into more complex eyes. The problem with the fossil record is that when we go back to the first animals we find, the complex eyes are already there. Trilobites, which appeared in the Cambrian explosion when all the major groups of animals first appeared, trilobites have very complicated eyes, very much like the eyes of modern insects. Other animals that were found in the Cambrian explosion appear to have camera eyes, like our eyes. There are no ancestors for these animals in the fossil record, so there's no evidence that these complex eyes evolved from simpler ones. They were there right from the start. Evolutionists continue to argue that because so many different kinds of eyes exist, they must evolve easily. Yet with complex eyes arriving so early on the scene, and with no evidence of precursors, Darwin's small gradations disappear. There may be different kinds of eyes in nature, but they are chronologically out of order from a Darwinian perspective, and there is no apparent evolutionary history leading up to them. But there is a second way that evolutionists use the eye as an icon of evolution. They claim that, despite its appearance of perfect design and its usefulness to us, the eye is, in fact, badly designed. The human eye has become an icon of evolution in two senses, two rather different senses. In one sense, uh, the eye uh, is thought to have evolved very easily. That has been argued by evolutionary biologists. Uh, but at the same time, the human eye, uh, as they put it, is wired backwards. And evolutionary biologists claim that this is a flaw because evolution was unguided. It had to work with what it had at the time. And this, they say, is evidence for evolution. Camera eyes are found in humans and also in cephalopods, that is, uh, squids and octopuses. Camera eye has a lens and it focuses the light on the back of the eye to make a nice, crisp, uh, clear image. In cephalopods, the light-sensitive cells that detect the light face forward toward the lens. In a human eye, actually in all vertebrate eyes, the light-sensing cells face backwards away from the light. 
And some defenders of Darwin, uh, Richard Dawkins among them, have said that this is evidence that the eye is uh, flawed, the human eye is flawed, and is, it's an accident uh, that grew out of its evolutionary history. It should never have been this way. But actually, when, you, when people study the eye, and they have in great detail, it turns out that the orientation of the light sensing cells is just about optimal in the human eye. This is a human retina. Here, you can see that the layer of cells at the back of the eye, the eye sensing rods and cones that detect light, are pointed backwards toward the back of the eye. And behind them are several layers. One is a layer of blood cells, Another is a layer of epithelial cells between the blood cells and the light sensing cells. And the blood cells and the epithelial cells nourish the light sensing cells, which have a very high metabolic uh, requirement, uh, among the highest in the human body. If the eye were designed the way Darwinian evolutionists say it should be, and we turn these light sensing cells around to face the lens, these blood vessels and the cells that help them uh, transmit things to the light sensing cells would have to be in front of the light sensing cells and would block the light. We would be almost blind. So that's why our light sensing cells face the rear because they're being nourished by this blood supply that if it were in the front would block the light. Despite the continued research into the design of the eye and the ongoing revelation that it is an exceptionally sensitive instrument, Defenders of Darwinian evolution continue to use this as an example of the trial and error outcomes of natural selection. Arguments for the optimal design of the eye are not coming from intelligent design proponents. They're coming from mainstream scientists who study the function of the eye. It's based on the evidence. So the defenders of evolution who continue to insist that the eye is flawed are doing so in the face of the evidence. In the last few years, scientists have discovered that a particular kind of cell in the eye, called the Mueller cell, acts like a, a waveguide. It actually comes all the way through the retina and brings light coming in through the lens all the way to the back of the, the retina and makes the images much clearer. It's actually uh, uh, an engineering marvel. When Kenneth Miller, who uh, is the author of a textbook widely used in high school, biology classes, was confronted with this evidence recently, his reaction was, well, that just shows that evolution then corrected the flaw that it put there. So evolution produced a flawed eye and then corrected it by adding these other cells that improve things. The problem with that is we have no evidence that the human eye was first flawed and then these cells appeared. There's no historical record to show that. And second of all, why does it make any sense to say that now, now the human eye is very good, uh, but only because evolution corrected its own flaw? I mean, to me, it's just a, it's a desperate attempt to hang on to the materialistic story uh, in spite of the evidence. It's zombie science.